On this day in 1899, the Grant Stand was officially opened before a league match against St Bernard's. When the new Celtic Park was constructed in 1892, it was already one of the finest sports grounds in Britain. Running adjacent to Janefield Cemetery on the north side of the ground, there was a covered stand and enclosure alongside a pavilion. It had always been intended that another stand would be constructed on the London Road side of the ground, but because the enclosure had been built on a filled-in quarry, it was necessary to wait until the ground underneath had settled before any new stands could be placed there. The building of the Grant Stand commenced in January 1899, and on completion was widely regarded as the finest in the kingdom. It was a private venture on the part of director James Grant, who was entitled to a percentage of the money for each seat sold. It was also a hugely ambitious project for the time, aiming to provide as uninterrupted a view of the pitch as possible, with all the comforts of the theatre for the patrons. News of the new stand spread far and wide, and the Lancashire Evening Post reported on the 28th of October, the stand is 70 yards long, 46 feet deep, and has seating accommodation for 2,000. The seats are tip-up chairs, upholstered in green leather. In front, the stand is fitted with glass windows, which can be raised at will, and so make the structure entirely open. Access is gained by a covered entrance on the London Road side of the field, and there is a transfer gate admitting from the inside of the reserved enclosure. It is expected that the various conveniences and new entrance, which will prevent all crushing, will bring a new set of followers to the game. Above the stand, reached by a special stair, is the press box and telegraph instrument room, both of which are fitted up in the best style. The stand is undoubtedly the finest in the kingdom and altogether is a credit to its enterprising owners. Amongst the various conveniences were toilets for both men and women at each end, and the whole structure was held above the terraces below on huge iron columns. The impressive structure was officially opened before a league match against St Bernard's on the 28th of October 1899. Celtic were the Scottish Cup holders and would go on to retain it this season, but having last won the league in 1897-98, would not win it again until 1904-05. It was something of a transitional period, with only MacArthur, Battles, Campbell and McMahon remaining of the great teams of the early to mid-1890s. Before a crowd of just 3,000 on a miserably wet and windy day, they lined up MacArthur, Storia, Turnbull, Battles, Russell, Orr, Hodge, Gilhooley, Campbell, McMahon, Bell. St Bernard's a club based in the Powder Hall and then Logie Green areas of Edinburgh, had won the Scottish Cup in 1895, but had fallen on hard times by 1899. They were not expected to put up much of a fight, and Celtic duly scored five first-half goals without reply. Johnny Hodge, a fiercely competitive winger, signed from Port Glasgow Athletic in January, had scored the decisive second in Celtic's 2-0 Scottish Cup final win over Rangers earlier in the year. He headed the first after only a few minutes and added a second on 20 minutes. Inside right, Pat Gilhooley then added a double of his own, either side of a typical headed effort by the great Sandy McMahon. The second half was a non-event, the Dundee Courier reporting on the 30th of October 1899. The Celtics' big lead left the game without much interest as to the ultimate result, although both sides maintained a hot pace, but the Celtic evidently contented with their five goals lead, indulged in a large amount of gallery playing. The Grant Stand caused a great stir on its opening, but it was not a financial success for James Grant. No allowance had been made for condensation when the windows were lowered, and so they were eventually removed, and it did not prove popular with fans, partly because there were so many stairs to climb to reach the seats. When the main stand on the north side of the ground was burned down in a fire that destroyed the upper story of the pavilion too, James Grant was happy to sell his stand to the club. It was eventually replaced completely in 1929.